Hi folks, it's a nice winter's day here in the UK, January 2020. Uh, we look at a nice picture of a pair of swans on what's called the Grand Union Canal. And I'll just pan around quickly to give you an overall look. Canals were built in England, or well in the UK, in the uh, 18th century and uh, early 19th century. I think this was built around 18, 1810, 1815 period. Up at the future there, you might be able to see a wooden structure. That's called a lock. That's how you change levels on the canal. These are all hand-built, mainly by Irish labourers. And they were the motorways of their day. Before the advent of railways, one of the quickest ways to move goods, probably from the industrial north through down to London or the ports, was along a canal. Because a horse could move a fair weight on its own, just pulling it along a straight piece of water. Sometimes they intermix with rivers, but often they were just handmade like this one through the countryside. Anyway, today, and I'll just take the uh, camera off the, the tripod, we've come to look at a pair of Wellington boots. Well, that's the name that the British give rubber boots, or wellies for short. Anybody from the UK will immediately recognise that. I think in other countries they have other names such as uh, Australia, I think they're gum boots. America, I think galoshes, although galoshes might be more uh, ankle boots. It's like the uh, swans have decided to... Oh no, they're standing around. And there's a bit of, although these are not a military pair of boots, this particular pair, there's an interesting backstory to go with these. Wellington Boots, Wellington's not a brand name as such, it's a nickname given by the British and it goes back to when we were fighting the French in protracted wars during the uh, 18th century and start of the 19th century and the commander at the end of the 18th and early 19th century was the Duke of Wellington and he famously uh, beat Napoleon Bonaparte at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. Now he'd been to his shoemakers in London and had a pair of high leg boots made for him out of leather of course not rubber at the time with a square top which was different from the normal style at that time I believe. And so Wellington boots became a popular fashion item amongst the gentry not amongst the working class of course they wouldn't have been able to afford them and they were made of leather. We fast forward to, I think, 1856, and two Americans, uh, Henry Lee Norris and his partner, came across to Scotland with a patent from Charles Goodyear, an American. Goodyear, that's a famous name for us today, from rubber tyres and blimps and probably other products. And Goodyear had painted here the weight of vulcanised rubber onto fabric, to make a woodproof product and they came across to Scotland and set up a company the um, let me just check the name of the company for you I think it was the yeah, North British Rubber Company I'm not quite sure they come to Scotland to do that possibly because of the Empire would have had access British Empire would have had access to rubber through India and probably Malaya and other places so maybe it was a convenient place to get access to rubber and they started to make rubber products, not just boots, but conveyor belts and other items. Not sure how popular they would have been. Probably would have been a cost element to them in those days. So the average uh, labour, etc. probably just used um, good old leather boots. But then we fast forward again to the First World War and all that changed. With the conditions in the trenches, um, trench foot with the water, etc. The British government ordered over 1.1 million pairs of rubber boots, or Wellingtons, from the company. No doubt a lot of those soldiers then brought them back. Housing was then starting after the First World War to take off with more private housing and council built housing. And then in the Second World War, again with the conditions, particularly in then Holland, now the Netherlands. Standard ammo boots couldn't cope with that. 
So again, a large supply from the company. And then after the Second World War, with a major increase in housing and people having the availability of gardens, Wellingtons became very popular. So today, they're used for all sorts of things. They're used for recreation on a day like today. People will be out walking with them. Uh, particularly with young children, perhaps, they're using Wellingtons because we know their feet grow fairly quickly. And so from one season to the next, you can then just get another pair because you can get very low, low cost models. And we'll talk about the other extreme. I don't use them for walking very much. Uh, in fact, today I've got on the uh, Swiss army boots, ideally in the snow. I just use them for uh, garden, maybe something like clearing snow, maybe for the drive, would be ideal. Um, so people use them for all sorts of everyday activities. And then in industry, uh, you get heavier versions, steel toe caps, steel shanks. If you're you know, laying pipelines in trenches, um, items of that neighbour, farmers, will all be using Wellingtons at one time or another. Then again, there's an upmarket version. The rubber company turned into what's called Hunters, and they're a really uh, upmarket brand used by the country set. Gamekeepers, probably farmers again, hunting people. Uh, they became a fashion icon in the 80s when Princess Di uh, had a pair of green hunters. These are not hunters, all of their green. They say they're just a low cost a pair of Wellingtons. So hunters came out with the green wally and it became a, almost a status symbol for the country folks. Um, changed hands a few times but still going. Uh, and uh, they're a top market product. So if you wanted a pair of hunters, you're probably looking at £100 to £150 for a top top end pair compared to just a few pounds for you know a low cost pair like these. Dunlop's another company, well known of course for rubber products and again Wellingtons. And Wellingtons used to just be black until Hunters started to bring out colours. Now you can get every colour under, under the sun. Often you'll see a Majesty and a pair of Wellingtons and when the Duke was active and in photographs and the hunters hold what's called the Royal Warrant and if you're not sure what that is it means that if you uh, sell a product to or supply a product to the Royal Family and it can be any product over a period of years you get a sort of seal of approval and you can use what's called the Royal Warrant. And they've got two. I think they've got Her Majesty, Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. So that's a prestigious thing to have for any company because it's a very good marketing aid um, if you've got the Royal Warrant. Because it's basically a seal of approval there from the Royal Family. So you can go for a really upmarket pair of Hunters right the way through to a low cost pair. Um, often getting them on and off is a little bit tricky. So you tend to perhaps buy a pair that's bigger than your boot size to help you get them on and off quicker, especially if you're keeping them in the back of a car for uh, everyday emergencies of going through a flooded area, etc. So that means walking in them any distance I might find would be quite difficult because they chafe. So as I say, I don't use them for walking. I used them last week while they're muddied up in the field next to my house where I had to move some conifer trees out of the way of the farmer. So um, that sort of thing, allotments, clearing the snow from your drive, walking, short walks, particularly on a day like today, people would be using in the UK, Wellingtons. Another bit of a story goes with that is that at the Battle of Waterloo, of course, one of the allies of the British was the Prussians. And the general in charge of the Prussians was, I think, a Butcher from memory. Um, and he also had a, a pair of shoes or boots named after him. So there can't be too many battles where the generals have boots named after them. So there we go, the humble Wellington story. And uh, it's quite chilly today, so it's time for me to go in and uh, get a cup of tea. Take care out there.
Bye for now.